So anybody in the room like music? Yeah. Oh, so when they asked me to speak today, first thing that came to my mind was the song by Destiny's Child. Anybody know that song? I'm a survivor. The words are incredible. Don't give up, keep going. All of those things, I'm never gonna stop. So um, I was excited to come. Yulia and I know each other for about seven years. When she was first starting in the marketing world, she was basically just getting going with a friend of mine that owns Capital Lighting. So we, uh, we actually traveled and did great things together and I could not be more proud of her and what she's done. So she's been amazing. So when they asked me to speak about survival, I, you know, I thought to myself, it is the most common instinct that every human being has. Every single person in this room has a story that they could tell where they survived. You're here to tell that story. So I don't know anybody in the room that's had anybody that's been sick or anybody that's been in an accident or something terrible has happened to them, but there is this innate will to succeed and, and be alive. So to me, the one thing about survival that is, is common is that you have to change. And I'm gonna to talk to you about a little bit about my story, what happened to me, how I got to where I am, why anybody would give a damn and listen to what I say is beyond belief, but it's, uh, um, so we talk about change, that was me when I was in high school. I started as a, as a salesperson, actually there's somebody here <laughs> that can actually validate it. I went to high school with Susan. So, um, so that was a pretty drastic change. If you look at me through the years, I had a really, really successful career owning a cell phone business, right? When somebody came to me and said, hey, we're gonna get in the phone business, I was like, the phone business? What, what does that even mean? And they said, oh yeah, there's gonna be these things that you can take around with you. And they showed me this contraption that went in my trunk and I drove around talking on the phone where no one else had a phone, so it was funny. So I, I was very successful, built a business, sold it when I was 34 years old. Um, but I have had a career of always reinventing myself. So when people say to me, they go, you know, wow, I've never seen anybody like you. You keep changing with the times. Wow, have things changed? And the thing that's so unique about today is that it changes really, really fast. My company, On The Ball Ventures, looks at three or four business plans every single day. And when I see people bring me a plan for three to five years out, I go, you're wasting your time. I need to see what's gonna happen in the next 90 days because things are changing so fast. There's so much. So you need to figure out how to survive every single day as a human being and as a business entity. So um, I now get to tell my story. I get usually two or three speaking engagements a month. I travel around, I just got hired by the NBA, I'll be speaking to Major League Baseball because people want real stories. There are people who are trainers, there are people who are speakers, I'm a doer. Everything that I talk about, I actually do, and for those of you who got a raffle ticket, I just wrote a book called Confessions of a Serial Salesman. Right? Every single day I get up, I have to reinvent myself. And so in order to do that, I need to have a process I got in a business that I have to deal with the most rejection of any other business, right? So when I, when I speak to people, I go, uh, in, especially when it's a group of salespeople, I go, how many in the room have a sales degree? And everybody's looking around, they're like, well, what are you talking about? I go, well, how long have you been in sales? Oh, I've been in sales for 10 years. Guess what? You have a degree. You've learned more in those 10 years than you're willing to give yourself credit for. So I'm gonna give you the hierarchy of my business and how many times it's changed. Now there's a new word that creatives are using called pivot. Anybody heard that word recently? It's like unbelievable how fast that became part of the language, right? So pivot, oh, I'm pivoting, I'm changing my life, I'm doing this. So we started as a sports marketing company, helping companies work with sports and entertainment assets. Fun business, but after a while, the teams and the market changed. If we had stayed that, we would have been out of business. We, we started, a, you know, we morphed and pivoted to another business where it was like, you know what? Companies are so busy doing, they're not thinking. So we created another tagline called pure thinking. Then it was all about sales and marketing. Then it was all about building business. And today we own probably, Michelle, how many businesses do we own? Uh, 
six or seven businesses that we are active participants in the sales game. We are every single day looking at new innovation and things that are happening, and it's mind-boggling to me. Anybody in the room use the app Waze? It's I can't even leave my house without using that. I mean, it is unbel it's unbelievable to me how apps have changed our life. And so think about, this is the best part, think about being a salesperson 20 years ago. There was no internet, right? So that means you would never be able to answer a question. Right? <laughs> right? Right? There was no Google, there's no CRM, no email, and no mobile phone. Can you imagine pulling off the road now to make a phone call? I mean, so what happens to us every single day today in, in a day in our daily lives, we take for granted. Nobody is grateful for what we have. There's a, a great comedian, uh, Louis C.K. He does a great skit on you know, nobody's happy. You know, everything's everybody, amazing. Everything's, amazing. everything's amazing. It's unbelievable. We're up in a plane and we're using wireless, and the wireless goes out, and everybody goes, "Do you believe this?" I, you know, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so I travel a lot, and it's unbelievable. One of the rules in my book, so the book is Confessions of a Serial Salesman. It's 27 rules for leaders and influencers. And the reason why I wrote the book is you need to have some kind of process because the world is throwing a lot of garbage at you. Anybody agree? How many people watch the news in the morning? Great, love it, I love it. Because creatives are great like that. The business world, they're all watching the news and I go, is there anything good about the news? Anything at all, right? So I tell them, I go, listen, if the world ends, you'll know. You don't need to hear it on, on, on the news. So well, what people do is they get up in the morning, they get loaded up with all this garbage, and then expect to go out and conquer the world. It is physically and mentally impossible. The world is out to get you. So, in order to do that, you gotta figure out what you want, right? And it becomes simple. How bad do you want it? It is a personal choice. Change is inevitable. Pat Riley, one of my favorite clients ever, said to me, he goes, the only thing in life you can count on is change. So you better learn to embrace it. And once you embrace it, it just becomes another mountain. Anybody in here uh, ever climb a mountain? Really? <laughs> Holy cow, that's incredible. <laughs> Statistically, that just blew away every room I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> in the right room. Incredible, man, incredible. Anybody climb Mount Everest? I've been base camp. Okay, so, so here's a way that you can visualize what change is. People get fired up, they train, they start at the base of the mountain, up they go, they get to the middle of the mountain, and the middle of the mountain is a great place to be, because you can look down and go, wow, look at what I did, right? And then you gotta look up and go, oh my God, look at what I gotta do. Most people plant the flag and go, I'm good right here. I'm not willing to do, because what it took you to get from the base to the middle is very different than what it will take to do from the middle to the top. And think about it, the terrain changes, the weather changes. So with all of those things, you need a process. So I'm gonna show you four logos, and I want somebody to tell me what they have in common. Now this is a little dated. Oh no! So, so somebody said sports, okay, sure. Champions, okay. Still not what I'm looking for, anybody? Winner, certainly, yes. Sorry? Anybody? <laughs> There's always one in every crowd. One in every crowd. Good coach. Okay. They are the best players in the league. Okay. So this will be the best takeaway for today, right? All of these teams don't watch the scoreboard, right? In life, right, in order to win, you have to have a process. Every single one of these teams was behind at the very end of the game. So if you watch the, the Super Bowl, the Patriots were behind 28 to three, right? Most teams would go in the locker room and go, holy shit, what are we gonna do? Patriots didn't do that. Patriots said, we know what we can do. We didn't do it. We're gonna stick to the process. Atlanta didn't do that and they lost the game. All of these teams, the Cubs were down 3-1. Everybody wrote them off. The Cavaliers were down 3-1 last year. You see, I gotta change that, but. Um, <laughs> and Clemson was losing up until the, or behind, not losing, they were behind until the last play of the game. So what it proves is that great teams, 
great individuals, great athletes have a process. That's why I wrote my book. I am statistically and habitually doing the same thing every day, whether I win or lose. I believe in life, you have to worry about the things you can control, not the things you can't. That's what survival is. What can I control? What's in my power? And I need to do it better than anybody else. Not worry about the scoreboard, not worry about all the things that are out of my control. I will tell you survival, I'll tell you a story of survival. The building that is now called the BB&T Center, many years ago, it used to be called the Office Depot Center, right? Well, Office Depot was gonna take their name off the building. The guy who ran that building is a friend of mine. He called me up, he said, I'm gonna give your company 90 days to find us a new title. It's like, wow, okay. So let me give you an idea of what that looks like. That's $3 million a year for 10 years. That's a $30 million deal of which we make a commission on that, right? We find the title sponsor. We're done. I'm in Memphis with the client going to celebrate dinner. The following morning, the Panther team was gonna fly in to sign the deal. Can't make this shit up. I'm in the car going to dinner and I get a call from them and they go, listen, we're not gonna make it tomorrow. What? <laughs> uh, we decided to go with Bank Atlantic. Dude, I'm in the car with the client. What are you talking about? So $30 million ripped, ripped away, right? Most people in talk about survival, bam, punch to the stomach, never get up again. Most people bitch about what happened before. They have no control about it, right? You have no control of the future. Nick Saban taught me one thing. Worry about winning. And it's not winning and losing. What is winning? What's important now? Right? What was important that particular moment was for me to regain my composure, similar to in boxing. I just started boxing for, for the mental and physical part of it. You get knocked down, you got 10 seconds to get up. You talk about survival, right? That's real survival. In football, there's a play every 40 seconds. If you dwell on what happened before, you lose. You can't change. You have to go with what's important. So the takeaway that I'd give you today is you have to learn to do the hard things and you got to do the hard things well, right? Jerry Rice said, the reason why I'm in the Hall of Fame is I was willing to do the things other people wouldn't do and I did them better. So it's really that simple. It's not complicated. When I train sales teams all over the country, I said, show me your calendar, show me your process, show me what you do, and most of them are all over the map. They have no, I, I don't know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I do the same thing every day. Everybody in this room brush their teeth today? Please say yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you run your life the same way you brush your teeth, right, that's what real success is. That's where real change and real survival comes from. So I wrote this book of rules. I'm gonna give you one or two of the rules today that you can take away. One that gets the best reaction to just about every group, especially CEOs. When I'm in a room with, I just spoke to 100 CEOs in Tampa, and this was what they voted the number one takeaway. One of the rules is called, tell me something good. Anybody ever hear that song by Shaka Khan? Right, so I'm a big music guy. I use music all over the place. Music is inspiring, music can change your life, change your mood, I listen to it every morning. So, that rule is, most of us are programmed when we see each other to go, hey, how you doing? How are you? Doing great. Right. Well, most of the time, it's a reason, it's an excuse, you can dump your shit on me. Oh, <laughs> so, the, oh, you know, my boss, my wife, my, uh, right? Yeah. So when you're trying to achieve something with somebody else, all of a sudden you're negative, nothing else I say is going to get you out of that negative. If you change your dialogue from how are you to tell me something good, so do this. Great to see you. Tell me something good. I'm glad to be here. Great, whatever you say, and I'll give you an example. I did a role play with uh, one of the banks in town. I had 50 of their bankers in there. We did a role play, and this girl, Diana, walked up to her and I said, hey, you know, awesome to see you. Tell me something good. She says, my son just graduated his second year of MIT, and I am so proud. This lady was beaming side to side, right? And all I did was tell her, ask her one more thing. Tell me more. She went on to tell me all about him and whatever. She was so elated that what do you think the next thing she said to me was? Why don't you tell me something good? So I had a pure opening to tell her 
exactly what I wanted to tell her in the first place. <laughs> but I teed it up better. Great. So if you do that, and by the way, every single one of those rules are not just for salespeople. They are for you know, moms, they're for kids, they're, um, the thing I am most proud of is that my son wrote the foreword, and my son is a rising fo uh, college football coach. And he wrote the foreword and said, I'm a product of these rules, and that's how I live my life. That's how I survive. And that's my presentation. <laughs>